Volunteers share about their experiences at a local train station by the Ukrainian-Polish border. This is Alia News. As soon as the war in Ukraine broke out, a group of volunteers drove to Poland and found a hotel in a town neighboring Ukraine which became what is currently still a base for Ebenezer, from where rescue operations are run and where refugees can be accommodated until their journey to a new home continues. For a while, volunteers, which have been coming to Poland from countries around the world, would go to one of the major refugee centers and, among other things, actively search for Jewish refugees who needed assistance in making Alia. In recent months, access to the centre has been highly restricted, and so the work at the base has been constantly evolving and adapting to new circumstances. One of the major activities run in recent months has been the work at the local train station. Volunteers would go there twice a day at the busiest times of day and help in practical ways by carrying people's often incredibly heavy suitcases and helping them find their way to their next destination. Two volunteers who served there in August have captured some of the work for us and we will now get an impression of what this once rather quiet train station looks like today. Welcome to Shemeshaw. We are in the southeast of Poland. And this is the train station, Shemeshaw Gubna. It has no elevators, not even escalators. In the past, that was not a big deal. But things have changed. The history books won't remember this. Is your husband with you? No, he left in Ukraine. He's uh, military and he defends uh, our city Kiev. He's fighting? Yes, right he's fighting every day. And are you here with all your family? No, it's only me. I left my family in Ukraine because uh, they were like, at least we have to save someone. You don't even know this lady and you're going to drive her all the way to Prague? I don't know. <laughs> why? 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 Why are you doing it? So we are here in Shemesho and for the last few days we've been going to this train station once or twice a day. We stand there wearing these shields just to let any potential all in see that we can help them go make Aliyah. You know, I always come here praying that God grants me just enough strength to carry all these bags, which is usually not something I would do. But, uh, you know, I've been doing just fine so far for the first four days. I can't overemphasize how satisfying it is to come here. Everyone who wants to, who has ever thought about volunteering, this is the perfect opportunity. Even once the Ukraine trains are taken care of, there's almost never a moment no one needs help. This also made it very difficult for us to film, at least in good conscience. So this is just, you know, all day. And it's really, really amazing. It may not look that way, but it's just very sad. <laughs> so here we are in the Frenzel station. This is Joshua trying to say a few words and being interrupted by a station employee. Waiting around. Oh, English? Oh, this side? Now this. Oh, this side. Okay. I think doing that because last time I did it almost fine. Okay. So he said it in like three or four minutes he's going to come. Uh, we've been asked by one of the station officials to wait 
for a disabled man on the train to arrive to help him get over to the Ukraine side of the border. Pretty quickly, when volunteering at a station where almost nobody speaks English, you learn the most important words you'll need in order to help people. Uh, passports from Ukraine? Yeah. After this little interruption, Joshua tried to say a few words again. So uh, we've been trying to film a lot of times and every time we, we, we started there was something, someone who needed help because you, someone needs help like literally every minute. I, I, I'm just going to talk you for a minute, you see, someone's going to approach me. Probably like a, not gonna happen because I'm saying it, but we all up. Okay. Oh, there. All to the village. Oh, wow, wow. Okay. And it's just crazy, you know. Every minute we we think we could leave, but then someone needs help, and then you're just stuck in this cycle of helping someone, and then someone else is approaching you while you're already helping someone else and it's like you just can't really leave here with good conscience but uh, there's plenty of volunteers here i just talked to a group of 15 japanese students who flew in and it's amazing to see so many people willing to spend their free time helping it was hard enough to capture anything on this day we spent filming but the experiences and conversations we had with people they're impossible to film anyways. This is something that I urge anyone who's watching this video to experience on their own. One of the best conversations I've had was with this one lady who lost her entire house and Joshua and I helped her carry two suitcases, which were the remains of that house. That wasn't even the most amazing thing. The, the greatest thing was that she was smiling she seemed happy. If you ever feel called to volunteer, if this is something that's on your heart, whether it be this at the train station or some other volunteer work that Ebenezer may offer in the future, please pray about it because I've never felt more useful than in these eight days I spent in Poland. You get to help hundreds of people every single day and cause the slightest action to create the biggest smiles and most thankful faces. Needless to say, just after Vaksal, which stands for train, the most heard word was Dziękuję. Thank you. Dziękuję, Father, for letting me have this experience and Jinkuya to you for watching. Praise God for every single volunteer that he has provided thus far. If you would like to know more about Ebenezer's work and vision and Alia, please visit our website. This week, Jews around the world have celebrated Rosh Hashanah, literally meaning the head of the year, and it's the beginning of the new year in the Jewish calendar. In the Bible, God instructed the Israelites to celebrate the Feast of Trumpets, as we can read about in Leviticus 23. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. It's the first of the three fall feasts, and today it is when Rosh Hashanah is celebrated. To all our Jewish viewers, we wish you Shana Tova, a blessed new year. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the Ebenezer Operation Exodus YouTube channel to stay updated on the latest Alia reports. Thank you.